Well, welcome to Talking Money. It's episode 17. Delighted to welcome back Hannah Godfrey for this recording. We've got three topical personal finance stories to talk to you about this week. And we're starting with some new data, some new analysis from the property portal Rightmove. And I think it's revealing things that probably don't come as too much as a surprise to us, which is the property market in the UK is ridiculously hot at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I think every time we talk about the property market, I'm in quite an unusual position of being proved right so consistently, mm. which very rarely happens. I'm very rarely right so frequently and continuously. But I mean, these are these are absolutely mental stats. So the average price of a home is now at an all time high. It's nearly three hundred and twenty eight thousand pounds. That I don't think will come as a surprise to anybody. Um, what I think is particularly mental is that in one month the average asking price of a house rose 2.1 percent which is nearly seven thousand pounds in cash terms so that is a hell of a lot in one month can you imagine everything being bumped up and the reasons for this again unsurprisingly the stamp duty holiday is playing a role we're now coming to an end of that period where i believe it ends in june yeah, and, and we're now sort of tapered out over, over the next yeah. few months after that. Yeah. Yeah. The big, big savings, I think, end in June. And we're now mid to late April. So people really are running out of time. And obviously it's yeah. it's it's genuinely quite a time consuming process buying and selling a house. Um, so it's partly that, but it's also just it's pure supply and demand. Mm. You know, right move have said there is literally not enough properties coming to market for people that want to buy them. And as a result, they are just flying off the housing shelves, if you like. It's they are going so quickly. I mean, to give one example that I think will really sell it to anybody that has bought and sold a house before. So two and three bedroom semi-detached houses are the kind of the thing that everybody wants. Mm. It would seem they're being snapped up the quickest to the extent that 30% of those are selling in under a week, yeah. which, I mean, you think about it, you, you market your property and it's being sold in two days or something like that. I mean, that is unbelievable isn't it I, I, I don't know if you've ever seen anything like this before but this is just yeah I mean when, when I bought my first place back in 2001 2002 it was a bit, a bit like that and properties were coming onto the market that morning and unless you could go and see them that morning you didn't really stand a chance of getting a, an offer in that was going to be accepted but you know for looking at the whole market they're saying there's a 45 day average in terms of listing through to um, accepting an offer um, 23 percent of properties being listed last month were sold within a week and that's it's nuts it really is to, to have such a hot property market and you know people making offers at asking price or above and selling so quickly uh, and, and as you said, it's this combination of factors, but stamp duty holiday is clearly one of them. It was interesting, this data came out, I think on the same day or day after um, the, the, uh, the, the launch of these 5% deposit mortgages, which are government backed, government guaranteed. So all of a sudden, we have these very high loan to value mortgages. I think 38 of them got launched this week from a variety of high street banks. First time in yeah, about a year that we've seen 5% deposit mortgages on the market. And this is just adding fuel to the property fire at a time when it already looks too hot. It already looks too expensive. And here, have a bit more stimulus. Let's make it even worse. Um, I, I know you, you're sort of, you've got some quite strong views when it comes to government interference in the property market. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I worry I'm at danger of, you know, repeating myself slightly because I, it's that subject, it just winds me up so much because people, there seems to be this belief coming from the government that we have to keep stimulating the housing market mm. as if somehow it is not already the most ridiculous market to exist yeah. in this country. It's it's getting absolutely ludicrous. I mean, the, the 5% mortgage, I have to say, doesn't offend me quite so much because I don't think it will have it, it absolutely i think it will stimulate the market but i think how to what extent that will be far less than this stamp duty holiday mm -hmm. and if it means i mean it's kind of a nonsense in itself it's great for people if they have managed to get a small deposit together because getting a deposit together can obviously be really really tricky especially if you're renting it's a lot of money to try and find mm -hmm. essentially and if it does allow people that have less money but you know they're earning okay money whatever they can actually afford to get a house they're just struggling with that initial saving yeah. 
I think that that is a good thing and that's reasonable. But where I say it's kind of nonsense is that let's let's take single people, for instance. It's really, really tough to get on the market if you're a single person. And this is partly because you're only a one salaried person. So even if you are fortunate enough to have a fairly reasonable deposit behind you, it, this this mortgage doesn't mean that you're suddenly going to be lent to. There will still be the same affordability checks in place. And if you would have had the issue getting on the property ladder anyway, because you're one salary, even if it's a above average salary, it's still not going to be as much probably as a two person household. You're still going to have all those issues in the first place. So it's sort of a nonsense. It's it, it will help a few people and that's great and i'm really happy for them but yeah. i don't think it's going to do that much good and this also as well as worth saying is not actually limited to first-time buyers this also no, can no. be anybody else I, i'm not sure of who that would be i can't imagine what that might people that are no, getting divorced, i mean that's, i suppose or... i suppose depending on the timing of when you bought your existing property if you are a home mover rather than a first-time buyer then you, you could be in a position where you have a very small amount of equity in the property um, what was quite interesting, um, we're, we're speaking Tuesday morning, these were launched yesterday, Monday, but a couple of the mortgage lenders immediately came out and said, yeah, we're doing them and we'll take advantage of this government guarantee, but not on new build properties. So I think the fear there was that the valuations attached to some new builds is too high. And of course, with a 5% deposit, you've got a very small buffer against negative equity should we see a property market correction. So that was one factor. The other one, of course, is uh, if you put a 5% deposit down, you're going to be paying a higher interest rate on your mortgage than you would if you put a 10% deposit down, as well as borrowing more money and having to pay interest on more. Um, but that, that buffer, I think, is a really key consideration here because we are talking about a, a hot property market and probably an overvalued property market. So you do put yourself at a real risk of negative equity if you've only put down a 5% deposit. That said, I can see the appeal because we're chasing a rising market. As you said, you know, asking price is up 2.1% in the last month. So if you're saving for your deposit and you're trying to get on the property ladder, that dream is just moving away from you so rapidly at the moment. So you almost think the faster I can get into, into the market, the faster I can get an offer down, the faster I can get approved for a mortgage and complete, the better because otherwise I'm just chasing a moving set of goalposts. Absolutely. I mean, I'm the sort of person, I think, I would say I'm naturally fairly risk averse actually when it comes to money. And so even if I was in a position where I wanted to buy and I had a deposit and I, you know, we were earning enough money that we could pass the affordability checks, whatever, I personally would be very, very nervous to do this right now because I think the housing market is so high and I would know how at risk of negative equity I would be that it would really, really put me off, actually. Although I think, I mean, I'm no mortgage expert, so do correct me if I'm wrong, but I've, I've read somewhere that it would be possible to kind of remortgage your house in, in the first couple of years if, if that issue came up. So you could slightly deal with those problems fairly early on, something like within the first five years. Does that make sense? Right. Well, if, if the property market had gone down after you yes, but yeah. yeah then i mean you're in negative equity anyway it'd be quite difficult you could potentially be trapped in a in a mortgage deal so you would have to watch out for that factor but i mean you made this really good point earlier which was yes it's a low deposit but we're still subject to the same affordability criteria so for a first time buyer you might get five times your salary as a as a maximum mortgage you're, you're still obviously subject to the same credit re uh, rating issues so if you have poor credit already you're not going to get access to these five percent deposit mortgages so i, I think it's it, you know it, it's great for first-time buyers who have a low deposit who can't necessarily chase that moving goalpost but we do have to think about the big picture i mean in this particular property market my main tip for people would be just put yourself in the best possible position before you go out house hunting so if you've got property to sell you know get an offer on it first so you're proceedable um, if you're a first-time buyer, speak to a mortgage broker first, you know, maybe spend a few months reviewing your outgoings and just get yourself in a really strong position, get a credit check done. Um, there's services out there like Experian, he'll do it for free for you. Just just check your credit file and make sure there's nothing nasty lurking there before you go to market. Um, but be prepared to move quickly and just take, you know, if you find the right property, know what you can afford to offer don't go silly above asking price because actually what what we're seeing in quite a few cases is people offering at or above the asking price and then it gets to the mortgage process and they can they can have um, the mortgage lengths of them that's no problem but the mortgage company will send a valuer along and the valuer will look at it and say 
no, not Lionelli, not having that at that price. It's too expensive. So it falls, the chain falls apart at that point. So you have to be still sensible about what you're offering, even if you can afford to go above asking price. Don't assume that you'll end up being able to buy that property. Uh, yeah, I think that's all very, very good advice, actually. Very good advice. And I think further to the point that I, I mentioned earlier about being nervous about it, I think as well, people that might be mulling this up, if, if they are renting, I think have to mull up as well the cost of renting versus yeah even if you're buying an expensive property because i know i've got a couple of friends that i've bought recently and they know they're buying in a high market that they're, they're well aware of it but their theory is well even if it dips in the first couple of years we're not we're not going to live there for two minutes we're going to live there over a long period of time the odds are the market will even if it falls off slightly towards the end of the year now will go on to recover and actually if you're somebody like me that's sort of almost waiting for the perfect moment if there is such a thing to buy a house by the time I've shelled out however much money in rent for the next year in order just to not get on the housing ladder maybe actually someone like me would be better off just biting the bullet and going for it even if it is more expensive but I guess those are costs that you'd have to weigh up as an individual yeah uh, and, and thinking about the long term just to sort of make a final point on this something that Tim Bannister from Right Move said was one of the factors here is um, under supply and over demand and that isn't probably going to, I won't say definitively, but I don't think that's going to change over the next decade or two. Um, we are seeing a bit more house building activity. So actually last year, year before was quite good for house building. Um, certainly the year before last, last year was rubbish. Um, but we are seeing a bit more in terms of supply side coming through. But at the end of the day, we're an island nation. Um, we've got you know very local planning laws in place at the moment in the main. So it's difficult to build lots of new houses in the places people want to live. So I don't think that supply issue is going to get dealt with you know, quickly. And as a result, that should support prices over the next decade or two. But again, there's no guarantees when any of this stuff. You know, Property is an investment at the end of the day and investments can go down as well as up. Um, we'll, we'll see. 